Let's talk uh, U.S. relations with Kenya. Shortly, we'll be joined by U.S. Ambassador to Kenya, Kyle McCarter. Uh, we'll talk about the fight against COVID-19, right? And the Kenya's uh, partnership with America on this and how America has come to our aid. Among the things that we know is that America is um, uh, at the forefront in um, pushing for uh, the, the development of a vaccine. It's among the countries that have come together. But already Donald Trump has said, well, when this thing comes out, we want to be right up there with it uh, to acquire it. We know that among the issues that we are facing is the, the, the challenges, especially in acquiring our test kits. Because you're just being bulldozed out of the market by everybody. So we're told. By the bigger boys. So we're told. Yeah. So we're told. You don't believe it? No, not entirely. Not entirely. So there's some truth to it, right? There may be some truth in it. Yeah. But if you look at the details, you may find that the process of procurement isn't quite as smooth as we may think. Yeah. And it isn't as though, if, if you find there's a problem in procuring something, you, you understand, you, the first thing you, you, you want to understand what this problem is so that you can overcome it. Mm. It can't be the same story throughout. How are the people getting this? What do they need? What are they doing in order to get this? And it's not as though test kits are just being produced in one place on the planet. Mm. No. There was a time when there's a hue and cry over test kits all over the world, all over. That is no longer the case. So, if one supply isn't meeting your needs, you go to the next. Find some other supplier, for heaven's sake. Mm. <laughs> You've got to look at the capacity of those other suppliers as well. You know, I am not even going to think about a possible solution other than that. Mm. That is not entirely That's, the case. It's not entirely the case. No, it is not. It's not a justifiable excuse to say that, no. oh, so far we've only done 118,000 tests. No. No. 118,000 tests. Mm. South Africa has done how many millions? 1.1 million? Mm. Mm. 1.14 million. There you go. This was as of yesterday. There you go. Right, it still continues to increase. Is that an excuse that we're and going we, to continue and giving? And we've done a tenth. Yeah. Mm. Where are they getting their test kits? Yeah. And you know, if we if look at other countries who have this, Egypt also is following, is following the, the South Africa way mm -hmm. and saying, you know what, we need to test our people and looking at the population and saying, this is the way in which we are going to go. Nigeria is giving the same excuses that Kenya is giving. Oh, there's a lack of test kits around the country. You can imagine with a population of almost uh, just above 200 million people, Nigeria has done 150,000 tests. Mm. That is not even the number of a small suburb of Lagos. So you can just imagine mm. what we are talking about. The seriousness with which we are dealing with this. And if you say that it does carry some import, then uh, can we apply it? Let actions and words then work in tandem. Yep. Yeah, it's it's absolutely, if, if you want, because again, I mean, how many times are we going to say it? How many times is it necessary to Senegal repeat Next Door has been developing test kits. They've developed a rapid antibody test kit that at least will show, you give you an indication yes. of what is going on in your body. And then it allows them to make decisions based on that, which is where I was coming with this issue is that the information that you're collecting by testing is not just so that you can tell people that certain number of people in the country have this disease. Yeah. That's not it. It is supposed to fuel then your decisions. It is information that then helps you make a decision. So testing is a good thing. You want to have as many tests as possible so that you have a footprint of what the country looks like. Mm. You want to do that as in you want to. You actually do. It's a good thing. So our fight against uh, covid really really um has a lot many answers uh to be sought many questions being asked and all those things and seeking out i mean what it has what? a lot to do with the problems we've had for the longest possible time it's mm. just now in an emergency situation such as this one mm. it's becoming glaring yeah. but this has always been the problem yep but yes. also it's an opportunity remember when you had a conversation uh, with the eu ambassador here yeah, and uh, the others uh, the ambassador of uh ireland. of ireland and uh, Switzerland as well. And they're talking about the kind of support that they're giving, especially in the arid and semi-arid areas. In, and there was the ambassador water, to... Um, Belgium. Yes, there was one, this lady from the Nordic country, which... Um, Sweden. Sweden. No, it wasn't Sweden. Was it? Oh, no, that we spoke to? Yes. Finland. No, it wasn't Finland. What are you talking about, City? Or that we had a discussion here or that we, we spoke to here on the phone? Denmark. No, we spoke to Denmark. 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 Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. 
You see, they talked about the amount of money they had given us specifically. I'm merely adding the fact that they're countries that had given us. Yep. Countries that have really come to our aid. Yes, and some of these assistance don't necessarily money. Mm. It's equipment and what have you. Now, the story that came out in the papers yesterday regarding some of the donations and where they have ended up, mm. Mm, that's not very difficult mathematics. Just to, to tell us what, what we as Kenyans are. We're joined now online uh, on, uh, yes, on the phone by the U.S. Ambassador to Kenya, Carl Makata. Carl Makata has been uh, the U.S. Ambassador here since uh, um, when last year. K Ambassador, good morning. Good morning. Karibu kwenye show. Sante. <laughs> now, but Ambassador, we were talking about uh, Kenya's fight against COVID-19. In fact, we we're just talking about how we have interviewed other ambassadors, especially from the European countries, and uh, who have talked about what kind of assistance that their countries have given Kenya in this fight against COVID-19. Let's start with that, the kind of partnership that the U.S. is offering Kenya in the fight against COVID-19. What are you, anything that you guys are doing with us? Well, I think we're, we're doing quite a bit, obviously. Uh, but I think, you, you know, you have to put this in perspective. It's not, it's not always what you did today. It's what you've done for decades. And I think uh, what the United States has done for decades is invest in the health of Kenyans. That, and, and it's paying dividends today. If you look at the testing that uh, is being done, uh, over 55% of all the tests that are being run in Kenya are, are coming from laboratories that have been uh, set up and established and supported by uh, the United States. So, you know, that was done uh, many years ago because of the 800 billion shillings that the uh, United States uh, great, uh, very lovingly mm -hmm. invested in the PETFAR pro project uh, to address HIV AIDS. And when you and we trained 34,000 healthcare workers, and, and specifically with COVID, we we trained workers in every county uh, just to prepare for COVID. So it's uh, you know you can't just put uh, a, a number on it and say uh, th this is how we've responded to COVID because uh, now we have and we've um, we've we've spent uh, as of now five billion uh, Kenya shillings just on COVID. And, uh, but that, you know, that, that doesn't mean we've stopped the other programs yeah. that are supporting healthcare workers in every county. And, and there's, you know, there's this talk of this money, call it vaporizing or, or uh, magically going away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, or, or we what call, we, call we call leakage. It, we call it leakage, yes. Leakage, yes, yeah. right? And we got this, we got this hole in the bucket that uh, mysteriously, you know, uh, comes about, um, and I, I think it's it's very. We have to be very clear here. United mm. States, we just don't put money in uh, wheelbarrows and put it on the street and say, "Take it if you want it." Mm. In fact, we we don't even we don't even we don't write checks to the central government. Uh, in fact, uh, we we actually uh, all ninety percent of what we do is through Kenyan local Kenyan organizations that distribute uh, whether that's food whether that's uh uh whether that's test kits whatever that is yep. we we do that locally and because we have to have that kind of transparency and and that kind of accountability mm. for the taxpayers so um i mean we're, we're very tough on people and i tell people that have they they claim oh you know we this money is being wasted show me show you send me an email you know, and, and show broad. exactly where it is. It's it's being you wasted. Let me know. Let's I'll talk go about take care of it right now. Ambassador, let's talk about the five billion that you say that you've spent so far yeah. in the fight against COVID. In what areas has this five five billion been uh, spent? Well, this in test kits, um, and I and I'll say this: these are test kits that are not fake. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you, but there seems to be. Uh, I mean, not only do we have fake news, we've got fake fake test kits on the market. Uh, so uh, these are actually test kits that, that work. We're talking about equipment that actually works, that's not missing parts. Um, uh, we're talking about, again, training, specifically training people and how to deal with COVID. Mm -hmm. And then you talk, look at the research, uh, the research through Kimry and other organizations. This is, this is one of the real, this is big news. Yeah. Kenya, Kenya, the Kenyan researchers 
are becoming world changers. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they, they we invested, you know, fif- almost 50 years ago in these labs and, and in health, and now the canyons themselves are, are becoming, uh, coming up with research that's changing the world, whether that be with HIV AIDS, whether that be with malaria, uh, dysentery, all kinds of things. Mm. I mean, you go to the, go to the Kimry lab, you'll, you'll see on their wall where they have, they have brought about findings that are just changing the world. So, yeah. you know, Kenya, if you really look at it, um, there's much more happening than just, uh, let's just say, an N95 mask. Than just the talk. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, and I, the, the and PEPFAS, PEPFAS fund, the PEPFAS fund that you that you mentioned, uh, the kind yeah. of support that you've given the healthcare sector over the years, especially right. in the fight against COVID-19. Now we understand that um, that program is coming to an end, and over time, the kind of money that you've been uh, putting yeah, in. Let, let me let me is, stop is, you right there. It's not coming to an end. Uh-huh. What's happening? <laughs> no, that's not coming. That's just again. I, I don't know. Maybe that's next to the. Uh, I think that that report may be the same purchased uh, report in the paper that was next to uh, the Wuhan lab director's uh, facts <laughs> on the virus. I don't know. I think um, I think it's uh, similar fake news. Uh-huh. No, uh-huh. we we have uh, we are continuing our investment uh, in PEDFAR uh, here in Kenya, mm. and uh, we have uh, there are some programs that Kenya and the United States agreed. That they would, we would, we would do share. We would share the burden, and 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 it's and you know what? Programs should get smaller. Mm. If they're successful, they should get smaller. Yep. Is it getting smaller? Yes, it is. In fact, should Kenya be able to take the whole burden? I'd love for Kenya to take the whole burden mm-hmm. because the, the objective here is to become self reliant. You know, if, if if you really care about someone, yep. you set them free. If you really care about something, you let them do it on their own. And, and you and you 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 you, you uh, encourage them to a point that they don't need you. Mm-hmm. So what happens well, what? in this case, Ambassador Makata, if this person that you've allowed to do this thing may or you know has the potential to mess it up, no matter how much you care for them? Well, I, I don't believe that's true. I I I, I go back to the researchers. Uh, th- these are men and women who are world class. That uh, in the next pandemic, they may be the ones that someone comes to and says, "I'm going to give you a billion, you know, I'm going to give you a billion shillings to come up with a vaccine," mm. and they're going to be able to do that. So, no, I, I, <clears throat> I think uh, they are uh, able and capable to take on the responsibility and take on the burden because, because if, if you know, I say this all the time, Kenya should not just be a beneficiary of foreign aid. I mean, it, it's very disrespectful to say, "Listen, you are you 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 can't you can't do this. You need my help." That's not true. Can, we we are willing to walk down that that pathway mm. to self reliance, mm. working together with Kenya. But at some point, if you really care for somebody, you set them free. Okay. So I mean, here, we don't want to go in the direction of colonialism, do we? As we understand it, with the, what you've just called, all right, so it's a reduction in terms of the amounts that are coming in through the PEPFA fund so that the Kenyan government can take up some of the burden. And it's an right. agreement that you've had over time. Let's yeah. look at our blood situation in the country. Because when you talk about blood shortage in this country, it goes straight into PEPFA funds. That we got to a point where uh, we don't know whether you had agreed that this was going to come to an end uh, this soon. But mm-hmm. by earlier this year, our blood banks are empty. Right. That was one of the agreements. In fact, uh, it took 15 years, 15 years for us to walk away from this. And we, this, was, this wasn't uh, a notice given last week, last month, last year. It's taken 15 years for Kenya to take on this burden. In fact, we were very clear mm-hmm. that, this, uh, that in this year, that this would be the burden of Kenya, and they didn't put it in their budget. So during those 15 years, were you working together like to ensure that um, the government and the government officials in charge would then be actually working towards having this burden on their own shoulder? Like, Absolutely. Like, like Absolutely. having the conversations, and minuted conversations, saying, all right, guys, next year, next yeah, year. Remember exactly. next year, we are not going to give you the money for, for it. it so ensure yeah, that it's in no, your budget. In other, other African countries, it only took five years for them to accept the burden. 
and, uh, and and it's taken three times as long for Kenya to, to, to accept this burden. Why do you think that is? I mean, it's something that we've had a conversation about here, you know, quite a lot. Why do you think it took such a long time? And even, even then, even as we speak about it, take, it hasn't, it, that cycle still has not been completed. Why do you see the same thing that you did in other countries, then having not taken root here? Well, here's what I think. I think, I think the United States probably should have put uh, a focus on self-reliance much earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think this is, you, you know, I, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't come here from the State Department. I didn't, I, I came here uh, as someone that's been working in Kenya for many years. Yeah. And, um, and I just, I, I think the worst thing you can do for somebody at, at, at times is just give them everything they need and not expect anything in return. Yeah. Uh, you, if to to say, listen, I'm going to sit here and and, and give you. Every, it's, it's like you're, you're almost like spoiling a child. Mm. I mean, even even with your children, you say, listen, it, it's you know, you have to grow up, and uh, and I can't just give you everything. Mm -hmm. You have to start doing some things on your own. And I think I think the United States really should have put the focus on self reliance a lot earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I, I always say I I think we should go from aid to trade. Mm -hmm. I think we should. I mean, that that puts Kenya in the position. Kenyans in the position to take care of themselves, and and I think we, we the United States uh, in is, in regards to aid really needs to work ourselves. We need to work ourselves out of a job. Um, I mean, this is not about you know. Uh, our goal is not to employ Americans to uh, deliver aid uh, to Africa. It should be for us to to uh, help. Kenya becomes so self-reliant that they don't need us, hmm. and and that's a, and that's a tough process, and that's a tough discussion to have. Over the years, Bon Ambassador, the U.S. has been accused, as other Western uh, powers have been accused of uh, giving that aid, but with too much expectation or too many controls in place. And in comes China, which comes and gives the same kind of support, well, not, not aid, but the same kind of support, but with less, uh, you know, you know uh, controls. Like you said, you don't place a wheelbarrow on the road and say, if you want this, just take it. Mm -hmm. And yet, it appears like uh, your competitors are doing exactly that. Well, first of all, I don't, I don't refer them to them as competitors. Uh, the United States is the competition. And so I, 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 and two, if you put in, uh, there's a striking contrast be, between the way we do things and they do. Uh, you know, first of all, we, we deliver equipment with all the parts. Uh, we don't deliver equipment with parts missing. We don't <laughs> deliver, we don't deliver uh, uh, test kits that are fake. Uh, we don't deliver uh, N95 masks that are out of date and spoiled. Uh, we we actually deliver part of the things that work, mm -hmm. and we have no problem getting close with the Kenyan people. Mm -hmm. And this is and this is what I have told everyone in my embassy. It's important that we get out of this embassy, and we work side by side with the Kenyan people. Yeah. And and the last thing you want to do for people that you care about is dominate them, control them, put them in debt that they can't pay. We we are not going to be predatory lenders. And, and, and this goes to the, the Nairobi-Mombasa Highway. Yep. It, it's a highway that needs to take place. It's a highway that the United States is ultimately going to build at a third of the price of what China charges for roads today. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it at a quality level that you, you will not have to rebuild this five years from now. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it actually with Kenyan labor. Think of that. What is the status that would, of that, that road? That would be big news. It, th this and road has been has been in the works for for a while now. What's the status? Yes. When is the groundbreaking well, going to take place? Well, the the the, uh, the project is engineered. Uh, Bechtel is the company that's put the investment into it. Uh, we're close, you know, we're close to coming up with a formula, a financial formula that works for Kenya. We're not going to put debt on Kenya that they can't pay. It has nothing to do. With, I mean, the price on this road is actually again. That's, it's it's actually it's half of the Chinese and a third of what the French are charging yep. for roads. Mm. I mean these are expensive roads and they shouldn't be. And and it's the high cost of projects that is that has forced the debt on Kenya. Mm. 
And, uh, and, and you know, you can all, th- that's not always bad if it provides infrastructure that has benefit to the people. Yep. But if you can't service the debt, it's a burden. There are those that have said, thank God for China, because now America can actually come and do a road for a third of the cost of what others are doing. Where have you been all these years? Where ha- how come we haven't seen other well, here, roads done I'm, by Americans? Yeah, and, and you're, you're, you know, you're right. You're right. And I, start to, I always start this discussion with the United States should have shown up and, and provided some competition to keep everyone else, their, keep their prices down. I, I admit that. Just like I admitted that we should have been focusing on self-reliance a lot earlier. Yeah. I, I have no problem admitting where we've, we've fallen short. Uh, but now uh, we're here to provide competitive projects, quality projects, with ethical standards that um, <laughs> are way different than some of these other projects that have been you know, built. I mean, if, 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 someone, if, if someone takes the brown envelope uh, on one of our jobs, they go to jail. Mm-hmm. So you know this is, the, the brown envelope is not a standard uh, in, in a project that the United States is going to be part of. In fact, uh, everyone knows if you take it, you go to jail, and you don't, and you and you go to jail in the United States. And so uh, it's it's up to uh, it's up to the United States now to show a contrast of how you do it right. And and I believe we're going to get that chance. I think this road will be uh, a great example of how you do it right. It will be a signature road uh, that everyone in, 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 in Africa will look to. Uh, let's face it. By the time you get to Mombasa, you need a, you need a holiday. I mean, it's, uh, that, 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 seven, that seven hours is painful, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I mean this, and, if, and, and, if, and if you told me that I had to, if you told me I had to pay, uh, you know, 800 shillings or whatever it is, or, or 400, whatever it, the, the cost is, mm. that I could drive safely on a, uh, uh, a lane of my own, not having to worry about some Matatu coming head on, a truck. Uh, I, I'd pay a toll. Uh, and especially if I can get there in four and a half hours. So, um, so I think it, at some point that's going to take place. And it's but the, here's the thing: it's going to be done right, and it's going to be something that both Kenya and the United States can be proud of. Your Excellency, why would you say the U.S. was slow in coming to this understanding that you've now arrived at? Well, I've only been here a year and three months. <laughs> I, I I think you know I, I you know this is I don't know I I think sometimes when you you care about I think a lot of people when they want to be compassionate they want to care about people they do what's instinct instinctive and that is to give and sometimes the the best thing to do is not give but just stand there and be with them <coughs> support them and encourage them. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think this is a. I, I think this is a, This is the way we're going to do this in the future. I mean, this is not just my idea. I think it comes all the way from President Trump. It comes all the way down from Secretary Pompeo. Mm-hmm. Self reliance is built into everything, uh, in every every policy, every document that's coming from the United States today, okay. which is a great thing. And that's and that's big news for Kenya because that means. Um, you know, Kenya's gonna, Kenya has the opportunity to become self-reliant, and um, we we want Kenyans mm. to be taking care of Kenyans. So this is what uh, you were calling aid to from aid to trade. And actually, now let's right. move into the trade area and uh, yeah. the conversation between our two presidents, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and President Donald Trump, earlier this year, has given birth into now these new negotiations that we are having for a free trade pact between Kenya and the USA. Now, we have seen what has been presented in your Congress by um, your government, and this is what you know, you're hoping to get approved by Congress in terms of your negotiations. From that, right. we're seeing that you want free access for your agricultural products to get into the country, access for uh, telecommunication, access for uh, intellectual property. Basically, it sounds like you are going to be flooding Kenya with American products and also, of course, America, Kenya is going to also be able to uh, flood, if it can, uh, the American market with Kenyan yeah. products. But it's, it's very many people who are talking about this are saying this is going to look like it's a one-sided kind of move where American products, American agriculture 
is going to come and uh, dominate and dwarf our Kenyan agricultural uh, uh, efforts. And then when you come with, with finished products and such, it's going to kill our own industries. Well, that's, uh, I can see why some people would be um, uh, skeptical. I can see why some people would be jealous. Uh, because here, here's the truth. The United States decided to do a free trade agreement with one country in sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah. One. And it was Kenya. It wasn't the people, you know, the people that are kind of annoyed by this, uh, maybe some of the neighbors, mm -hmm. <laughs> we didn't choose them. We chose Kenya. Mm -hmm. And we chose Kenya because we believe Kenya has the, has the leadership, has the uh, ability to to work with us to grow this grow our economies together, and it's going to be a huge benefit to the rest of East Africa. But the truth is, we we didn't choose anybody but Kenya. Yeah, and uh, we did that because we we thought that we there's enough potential here together that we can uh, we can double, triple, quadruple uh, the size of the economy together. Mm. Uh, and, and you think about it. We 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 just made this. Uh, we made a, a, a really good trade deal with Mexico and Canada, the MC, Mexico Canada Agreement. Mm -hmm. That same agreement is what we started with with Kenya. Uh, for our sa the same people that we signed trade deals with in South America and Korea, yeah. all over the world, we started with that with Kenya. So this is going to be a win-win uh, agreement, no matter what. Uh, some of our tougher discussions will be around, uh, um, you know, used clothing and things like that. Uh, this is uh, this has a huge potential, uh, so that uh, to to really boost the economy of Kenya, and it's going to be good for both of us. Um, It'll be a win-win. Uh, right, Ambassador Makata, are yes? Kenya and the United States equal partners at this table? Oh, absolutely, hmm. absolutely. I think. Uh, this is this is a very balanced relationship. Uh, it's a very respectful relationship, uh, and um, I, I we've started it right. You know, we started talking about this in the states. We're gonna we're gonna start again here in July. Um, the the language is put on has been put on the table as a you know starting point. Yeah, uh, we will get to something that is modified. Um, and acceptable to Kenya uh, and, and the United States. I mean, these things just take a little time. Yeah. Uh, but I think we're, we're both we're both committed to a win-win, uh, you know, uh, agreement, and that's what it will be. This is uh, geared to maybe in some way replacing the current AGOA Act, which comes uh, to the end to end in 2025. Right. Is it likely that we're going to have this new free trade agreement in place before then? Oh, well, it will, um, because I think we have about f just under five years for a Goa yeah. before it uh, it uh, goes away. We we want this to supersede. We want this to be even better. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's a lot of good things in a Goa. Honestly, a lot of things have not been taken advantage of mm. by Kenya. Uh, we hope that under the free trade agreement, uh, Kenya is able to take advantage of more of the uh, the allowances under AGOA mm -hmm. uh, that would be similar to the free trade agreement. And so, uh, yeah, AGOA is not going to be. Uh, it goes away in 2025. It's 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 not going to be renewed. This free trade agreement is going to supersede it, be better than it, mm -hmm. and uh, allow the the economy to get even bigger. Uh, than it would be under a Goa. Okay, and then now let's come to the geopolitics. You uh, ventured into it a bit and said maybe those who are complaining about these are neighbors and <coughs> other countries in Africa because USA has chosen Kenya to start off this kind of agreement. Yeah. Kenya is among the countries that have agreed with uh, neighbors in Africa to form the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. Mm -hmm. And also Kenya is part of the East Africa community, it's part of COMESA. And when you get into this kind of a pact with a giant like America, it right. is likely to have an impact on the kind of commitments that you make in the others, like the Continental Free Trade Agreement and the ESC and COMESA. How do we, how do we balance between these to ensure that Kenya 
is get benefiting from that, but at the same time still benefiting from the relations it has had with its neighbors for many years. Well, here, here's the thing. If, if when we succeed together hmm. uh, under the free trade agreement, it's going to have uh, exponentially uh, more benefits to the neighbors than they've ever had before. Uh, I mean, this is uh, if, if we can, if we are able to uh, trade on a on a level playing you know field. I mean, if with uh, the understanding that. Uh, intellectual property is going to be protected uh, with with tariffs that are lower. I mean, this is going to this is not just going to benefit Kenya. Uh, this is going to benefit all their neighbors. Mm. And at the same time, we've supported the uh, the African Continental Free Trade Area, uh, and we pledged our support to that. Uh, we'll continue to do that. We'll continue to to make sure that uh, it reaches its full potential. And uh, and, and in fact, including uh, you know, including through targeted technical assistance and trade capacity building. I mean, we're we're uh, this is we're not saying we're going to we're not asking Kenya to uh, to leave any agreements with its neighbors. Yeah. We're just asking for an agreement between our countries that's much better than it is today, and it will be much bigger than it is today. Mm. If we can shift gears a little bit, um, Ambassador Makata, and now look at what is happening in the continental United States. So many things are happening. We don't know where to start from. Um, but then giving, you know, opening up that conversation. And let's start with, you know, the protests that we've seen widespread around the U.S. Um, it's affecting the U.S., but it's affecting the globe as well. Um, what are your initial thoughts about uh, the winds of change which seem to be sweeping across the states, especially when it comes to... Um, uh, the face of racism or as in depth as, as racism has gone yeah i think here's here's the thing i think we can do better hmm. I, I think i say individually i think we can do better i think as a country we can do better uh i think it's important to take a, a inventory of where you're at i um you know the united states is looked to as the the, the kind of the the one that champions human rights, the one that does things right, that believes in justice, delivers justice, and um, and look, we have to we have to admit that this was not a, this was not a good situation, mm. and it was not one that exemplifies the uh, exceptionalism of the United States democracy, and so we've got to get better, but I think it starts with us individually getting better. And I think we have to say, you know, what what can I do? Um, and I think, you know, when it comes to police brutality, it's inexcusable. Anywhere, anytime, by anyone. And uh, we, we we put a trust in those, those you know, uh, people for public safety. Mm. And that trust should not uh, be broken. Um, you know, I, I think it's there's a conversation going on in the United States that I think is going to be better for the future. And uh, again, we can't say, we're, no one is saying that we uh, are innocent, we, we've made some mistakes, but every democracy has to grow up, just like Kenya. Yep. And, uh, and, I, and all I can say is, I'm going to do whatever I can to make America better by making myself better. And, and, uh, and I think we all have to make that decision. Hmm. Do you think that there will be some kind of change, uh, really, to say that things will change? Oh, I do. I think uh, I'll give you one one small example. Uh, when I was in the uh, Illinois Senate uh, ten years ago, it was a it was a bill that one of my uh, seatmates, my cohort, who was a retired uh, county uh, deputy, a sheriff. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wanted to um, he wanted to register the police, just like we have registered teachers that uh, you know that have to uh, have to hold to a certain standard. Yeah. So that uh, if there is a if there is a bad policeman, a bad cop, you've got a way for them to to take them out of the mix. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't they can't hide under uh, the protection of a union. They can't hide. They can't be just sent to another area. To misbehave there, mm -hmm. and so this was something proposed ten years ago, and now it's coming back up. 
And I think it's going to be, you know, it wouldn't come up today if it wasn't for this situation. And I think now you're going to see my cohort and myself, we were Republicans. Now we have a Democrat uh, who is, you know, is pushing the, <laughs> pushing the bill uh, in Illinois. And I think it's going to be a good thing that um, I think it'll go nationwide. And so would that have happened if we hadn't had this situation? Probably not. Mm. But now you've got Democrats and Republicans working together to hold, to provide more accountability. And um, I think some good things will come out of this. Talking about the election that's uh, slated for later in the year as well, and, uh, and the electoral process in the states, and there are those that have uh, started raising questions. Uh, last week we saw uh, somewhere in Texas where voters were queuing for long just to access it. <clears throat> and looking at U.S. as a developed country, and you're sitting in the 2020 where people are queuing for long to cast their ballot. What is happening to the electoral system in America? I, I think it's, it's what should happen. People should be more involved. They should, uh, hey, listen, there's a lot of people that don't vote <laughs> and should. And there's a lot of people that complain. And, th and then they don't vote, which is wrong. I mean, if, if, if you really want your voice to be heard, you've got to vote. Mm -hmm. And that goes for Kenya, too. I mean, can you, the people, uh, you know, what, what, can, what can the United States do when it comes to Kenyan elections? We can do one thing, and that is we can help create an electoral system that, that guarantees the people of Kenya that their vote counted. It's not for us to choose the candidate. It's not for us to choose the winner. Uh, we have to be very careful here. This is not our country. Mm -hmm. We're visitors, and uh, we're guests. But uh, if we can help, if my, myself and the other, the other countries that are here, the other, uh, you know, embassies can help assure the Kenyan people that their vote counts, that's something we can do. But in the United States, people are, they are, they're, uh, I think they're more uh, motivated to go to the polls now mm. and for the right reasons because they want to see some things change. And, um, and I think there'll be, there should be a very high turnout in the U.S. elections come November. Uh, Your Excellency, the Republican Party, if I, if I were to talk about its history, uh, began as the one party in the states that actually accommodated uh, what we refer to as African Americans and people who were anti-slavery uh, at the very, very early stages. In fact, if I'm not wrong, Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. <laughs> Yeah, exactly right, and that's you know that's my home state. Uh -huh. and, uh, and <laughs> so, what is that exactly has happened over the years? The point where the Republican Party has morphed into uh, a party that is compared with the Conservative Party in the UK, where you seem to focus more on supporting businesses rather than human rights. Well, I don't think that's a I don't think that's an accurate statement whatsoever. Um, that may be the narrative of uh the opposition mm. uh and i think and, and and they can try really hard they can't they can't change history you you cannot um uh, you can't tear down the statue of abraham lincoln in front of the uh illinois uh, state house and and rewrite history he was who he was he did what he did and uh and you said it yourself he was the one that freed the slaves in, in the united states and uh, you can't re as much as you want to. You can't rewrite history, and uh, just because you don't like uh, the way the narrative is for the day. So I think um, again, we've got to we've, we've got to be inspired by people like him mm -hmm. uh, to fight for for human rights, to f to fight uh, for the uh, the ability for everyone to be in a democracy to be represented. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's a, that's a lot of a lot of the things we do here in Kenya too is to support support and bring capacity to democ the democracy. And uh, and and we do work you know we do work with the MCAs in the counties. We do work with uh, uh, you know local uh, local groups uh, fighting for human rights. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to keep doing that. Ambassador Kyle Makata, thank you very much for speaking to us. What would you, would you say would be your last words in speaking to Kenyans directly? Well, l listen, I, I always say USA Marafiki, and I say that because I, I really believe that the United States is going to be 
the best friend that Kenyan can ever look to. And we're going to do that because we believe Kenya deserves self-reliance. Uh, we believe they have the ability to take care of themselves. They don't need uh, they don't need us to tell them what to do. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to we're going to be the best friend they could ever have, working side by side, so that uh, that Kenya can be uh, what I call the shining star of democracy and prosperity for the rest of the continent. I believe this is I believe this can happen, and we're going to do everything we can to make that ha happen. Indeed, and we also thank you. Thank you very much for the continued relations between Kenya and the USA. I mean, even your predecessors were participated in really helping for the clamor for the second liberation of the country, the birth of a new constitution, the growth yeah. in trade, a billion shilling, a billion dollars worth of trade between Kenya and the USA. And uh, USA is Kenya's third largest export market. So yes. we are joined in the heap, like the president said at some point. <laughs> Right. Have well, a good thank day. you for thank, thank you for having me on. God thank bless you so you. very Bye -bye. much. Asante Sana. Right. Ambassador Kyle Makata is a US ambassador to Kenya. He's been speaking to us on various issues, saying, Well, we're here, we are working with Kenya in various ways and uh, changing the narrative from aid to trade.